Harim children, I hope all of you have gone through the previous lesson and uh, studied it in detail. Today, we will pass on to the second uh, part of the same lesson, the continuation of the same lesson. We had actually discussed what health is, but today, let us discuss what is a disease. A disease is defined as a disorder of an organ or an organ system. I repeat, it is a disorder of either an organ or an organ system. For example, suppose you have cat tract. Definitely it is the disorder of the eye, the organ eye. However, the infamous COVID disease that is happening now, you know that it is the entire respiratory system which is affected. So, a disease can either be a disorder of an organ or an organ system. Let us now discuss what are the different causes for diseases. I have listed out some of the causes. The first cause, definitely the moment I tell you about what is a disease, you may recollect what you have learned in lower classes about a disease causing organism which is known as a pathogen. So the first cause of a disease is a pathogen. Now what exactly is a pathogen? A disease causing organism is a pathogen. It can either be a bacteria or a virus or a fungi or a helminth or a bacterioid a viroid or a PPLO. Any of these organisms may enter into your body and cause a disease. So such disease causing organisms are broadly called as a pathogen and that is the first reason for a disease. What are the other causes for a disease? The second cause are the genetic or the chromosomal reasons. Now there are certain diseases which are caused due to genetic problems or due to chromosomal aberrations. For example, color blindness is a genetic disorder. Hemophilia is a genetic disorder. Down syndrome is a disorder caused by a chromosomal aberration. So you find that that's a second cause for a disease, either a genetic disease or a chromosomal disorder. What is the third reason for a disease or a third cause for a disease? Hormonal changes. This is again something that you have learned in your lower classes. Hormones. Now hormones are actually required in your body for carrying out various functions for various metabolic activities. However, they are required in the right proportion. If they are pr produced either in deficient quantity or in excess quantity, we know that it can lead to a hormonal imbalance resulting in a disease. Now I am sure the moment I tell you about hormonal imbalance, there are a number of examples which crop into your mind. Now think about a disease which results due to deficiency of the pituitary hormone growth hormone. I am sure all of you would be jumping up and saying, yes, dwarfism, correct. So dwarfism, gigantism are all diseases caused by hormonal imbalance. Diabetes mellitus, goiter, all these are examples for hormonal diseases. Let us pass on to the next cause for the disease that is a deficiency disease. Now we know that there are diseases caused when a particular nutrient is in deficient amount in our daily diet and it could be either due to deficiency of vitamins or deficiency of minerals. Some of the deficiency diseases which you have probably learned are night blindness, rickets, night blindness caused due to deficiency of vitamin A, rickets caused due to vitamin, uh, deficiency of vitamin D, iodine deficiency goiter caused due to deficiency of, of iodine, anemia caused due to deficiency of iron. These are some examples for 
diseases caused due to deficiency of a particular nutrient. Now we come to the next category that is lifestyle diseases. Now what exactly are these lifestyle diseases? Now most of the youngsters, I wouldn't say youngsters, even when you crop, when you enter into the, uh, say into the middle age, we become couch potatoes. Now what exactly is a couch potato? You are so happy with a plate of chips, sitting in front of the idiot box or the TV, munching away the chips and unknowingly you are changing your lifestyle. From a very active lifestyle, you are becoming a very passive you're taking up a very passive lifestyle. Now this definitely can lead to many lifestyle disorders. One is obesity. The second is hypertension, arteriosclerosis. All these come under what is termed as the lifestyle disorders or lifestyle diseases. We now pass on to the next category that is degenerative diseases. Degenerative diseases normally come across when a person starts advancing in age and due to probably low immunity or due to certain genetic reasons, there may be degeneration of certain parts in the body. A typical example of a degenerative disease is arthritis. You find people suffering from arthritis. It could be rheumatoid arthritis or it could be osteoarthritis. It could be another disease of osteoporosis. All these are called as degenerative diseases. So these are some causes for diseases. Let us recap once again. The common causes for diseases are diseases caused by pathogens, diseases either due to genetic problems or due to chromosomal aberrations. Third is diseases caused by hormonal imbalance, either deficiency or overproduction. Deficiency diseases either due to vitamins, minerals or even sometimes due to proteins and carbohydrates. Probably you have learned about protein, energy, malnutrition, kosciurkar, marasmus. Lifestyle diseases caused due to change in lifestyle from an active to a passive lifestyle. And last we have the degenerative diseases. Let us now discuss how diseases are classified. We learned about what is a disease, what are the causes of diseases. Now we pass on to the classification of diseases. Diseases can be broadly classified into two. I repeat, we are passing on to classification of diseases. Diseases are classified into two, two broad classification. One is the infectious diseases and the other one is the non-infectious diseases. The moment you heard the, hear the word infectious, what crops up in your mind? Yes, something that is communicated from one person to another is known as an infectious disease. A disease which can spread from one person to another. How does it spread? Either through air, through aerosols, through contaminated water, through contaminated food, through vectors like a mosquito or through other body fluids like blood, semen. All these are methods by which it communicates from one person to another. So an infectious disease is something which is spread from one person to another. Now, infectious diseases can again be classified as contagious diseases and non-contagious diseases. So infectious diseases are spread but they can be again classified as contagious and non-contagious. Let's see what is the difference between them. A contagious disease is one which is spread through direct contact. For example, 
conjunctivitis, the sore eye. Suppose a person has conjunctivitis, it can be directly transmitted from one person to another. Or the ringworm, in Malayalam it is known as vattachuri. If it's a fungal disorder, it's a fungal disease, it can be spread directly from one person to another. So such diseases which are directly spread are called as contagious diseases which comes under the category of infectious diseases. Okay. Non-contagious diseases are infectious diseases, means they spread. But they are spread not directly but through various methods. Some diseases may be spread through air. Diseases can be spread through air. Diseases can be spread through water. For example, cholera, jaundice, contaminated water, spreads jaundice and cholera. It can also be spread through contaminated food. Typhoid is an example of diseases, of a disease spread through contaminated food. It can be spread through blood. A blood of a person who is infected. For example, hepatitis B is spread from blood. It can be spread through semen or other body fluids. Typical example being AIDS. Diseases can be spread through vectors. Malaria, filariasis, dengue are all examples spread through the vector mosquito. So these diseases are known as non-contagious diseases meaning they are not spread directly but they are spread indirectly through various means like food, air, water, blood, semen etc. We now pass on to non-infectious diseases. I repeat diseases are first classified as infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases. What are infectious diseases? Diseases which are spread from one person to another. What are non-infectious diseases? Diseases which are not spread from one person to another. They are also classified. Okay? They also have subdivisions. Now what are they? Under this category, you know that deficiency diseases are non-infectious. If I have scurvy, it doesn't mean that you need to have scurvy. I may be deficient in vitamin C intake. But you may have be, you may have sufficient amount of vitamin C. So deficiency diseases are non-infectious. It doesn't spread from one person to another. All the deficiency diseases come under non-infectious category. Second is cancer. There are different types of cancer like carcinoma, sarcoma, leukemia, lymphoma, etc. And most of them, almost all of them are non-infectious. It doesn't spread from one person to another. The third one is degenerative disease. We already discussed what is a degenerative disease. It's something that happens in the later stages of life and it can be like arthritis, osteoporosis. It doesn't spread from one person to another. So such diseases come under non-infectious category. Allergy. Allergy is a disorder caused due to certain immunological problems. And I may be allergic to a particular substance, to a particular allergen, which results in certain allergic reactions. But you may not be allergic to that particular allergen. So allergy again is a non-infectious disease. Let me recap the whole thing once again. Classification of disease. Diseases are classified as infectious and non-infectious. Infectious which spreads from one person to another. Non-infectious which does not spread from one person to another. Infectious diseases may either be contagious or non-contagious. Contagious is something that spreads directly from one person to another. Non-contagious may spread either through air, food, water, blood, semen, etc. Non-infectious diseases are those which do not spread. They may either come under the category of deficiency disease, degenerative disease, allergy as well as cancer. 
Okay, children. Now let us pass on to the next topic. These are certain diseases caused by pathogens. So we'll just recollect what is a pathogen. A pathogen is a disease causing organism like bacteria, virus, fungi, uh, helminth, protozoa. And these pathogens, they may enter into our body through various methods, either through air, food, water, blood, semen. They enter into our body, multiply within the body and at the same time adapt themselves to the human body causing changes in morphology and physiology leading to problems within our organ and organ systems. I know it's quite a lengthy description. Let us dissect it one by one. Pathogen is a disease causing organism. As we learned earlier, it enters into your body. How does it enter? Either through air, either through food, through water, through blood, semen. And once it reaches a healthy body, it starts multiplying. It may be just a few microbes which has entered pathogens which has entered but it multiplies and once it multiplies it starts interfering with the vital functioning of our body okay it interferes with the functioning of our body leading to morphological and functional changes what is morphology structural changes of a cell as well as functional changes of a cell and that may lead to problems in an organ or the organ system. So I hope the definition of a pathogen is very clear. Let us take an example. Suppose a malarial parasite enters into your body. How does it enter? It enters through the bite of a mosquito. The parasite enters, the plasmodium enters, reaches the bloodstream and then it keeps multiplying. Okay, it keeps multiplying and then it causes a lot of changes both in your red blood cells as well as in your liver. At the same time, it is adapting itself to the human body, adapting itself to the human body, bringing about certain changes in our organ and organ systems resulting in a disease. So this is what is known as a pathogen. So once again, a pathogen is a disease causing organism which enters into your body through various means, affects your vital functioning and causes changes in the morphology as well as functionality of an organ. So children, please study this topic properly and see you for the next class. Thank you.